Criminal cyber gang has stolen as much as a billion dollars from over 100 financial institutions. Лаборатория Касперского опубликовала информацию о самом крупном киберпреступлении в истории. It says hackers used malware to gain access to banks in 30 countries. How were these thieves able to carry this out for so long? Biggest bank heist of the century. How many ordinary people would you have to rob if you wanted to make a billion dollars? Thousands or even hundreds of thousands of people? Even if millionaires were a target, you would still need hundreds of them. And that, folks, is how the greatest bank heist of the century was committed. By choosing the right victims, which were a few dozen banks and financial institutions. So let's take a look at the Carbonac Hacking Group and the greatest heist of the century they managed to pull off. Carbonac, also known as Anunac, is a threat group originating from post-Soviet countries, namely Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. A report by cybersecurity company Group IB suggests that Carbonac was formed from the remains of the Carburp Group after the arrest of the group members in 2013. They even borrowed code from the Trojan used by the Carburp Group for their heists. And these heists were a work of art. Unlike many threat groups, Carbonac paid no attention to the bank clients. They were not good enough prey. No, the eyes of the threat actors were set on bigger fish, the banks themselves. It's important to remember that Carbonac is sometimes classified as APT, or Advanced Persistent Threat, meaning that they are a stealthy threat actor with their modus operandi lying in infiltrating the target network and staying inside unnoticed for extended periods of time. The preparation and attacks of this kind require a lot of resources, from financial assets to highly skilled individuals. The amount of required resources is so high that in most cases, APT groups are state-sponsored hacker groups. However, in Carbonac's case, there's no public information about the group's involvement in any government-issued campaigns, even though there's a potential link between Carbonac and Fin7, another threat actor group that has employed Carbonac's signature malware as well. Fin7 is also a Russian-sponsored APT group. But if we consider that the Carbonac threat group's main target was the Russian financial enterprise, there might be no connection between the group and the state after all. But let's get back to the heist and how it was pulled off. Uh, the first step to every successful heist is infiltration. And what Carbonac's method was simple, spear phishing. This social engineering compromise is designed to target a specific person in an attempt to, um, uh, to exploit that sensitive information and compromise uh, businesses' internal networks. Once a way in was established, it was time for the group's ace in the hole, the malware that gave them its name, Carbonac. This is the perfect backdoor, a jack of all trades that can extract data, give hackers remote control over infected systems, and even allow them to monitor the network. Through Carbonac, the group slowly made its way through interconnected systems within their targets until they located the points of interest. It's hard to emphasize the criminal ingenuity, planning, and skill sets required to freely navigate through the bank systems without triggering any alerts. But it's just the beginning. So Carbonet reached the point of interest, an account with the elevated privileges within the bank system. Then it was time to gather the data. They've also uh, gathered the recordings uh, and videos of bank employees interacting with the systems. This allowed Carbonac to analyze uh, the inner workings of the specific bank branches. Installing keyloggers on the infected computers also gave threat actors all the credentials and user inputs they needed. Not for one or two, but the hundreds of banks across multiple continents. It was time to strike, and strike they did, swiftly and devastatingly. The first layer of attack was the ATMs. At specific times, ATMs of multiple banks just spit out all their cash, with money mules working for Carbonac ready to collect the spoils. The second layer involved transferring huge sums of money to accounts belonging to the other group of money mules, who proceeded to transfer the funds to the drop accounts in China and the US, abusing the SWIFT network. 
The third layer involved pumping bank accounts of common bank customers with stolen money, just to drain them completely a couple minutes later. It took Carbonac two years to finish their grand plans. But once they were done, the banking systems in Russia, Germany, the USA, Ukraine, and China were devastated. A total of around $1 billion was gone. The greatest cyber criminal heist was finished, and the group has cemented its name in history and international wanted lists. But the story's not over yet. Years after the heist, on March 6, 2018, the criminal mastermind made a slip up. After a complex investigation carried out by the Spanish National Police with the help of Europol, the FBI, as well as authorities of multiple countries, one of the alleged leaders of the Carbonax cyber gang was brought to justice. Spain's interior ministry named the criminal of Ukrainian ancestry as Dennis K. After his arrest, police seized his computers, jewelry worth $620,000, documents, two luxury vehicles, bank accounts, and two houses valued at roughly $1.24 million. Uh, at the time, the Spanish National Police confirmed that despite the high technical level behind the carbonate highest they had no chance of drawing cash from the ATMs on such a large scale. They have proved that criminals behind the Karbenak were supported by probably Russian and Moldovian mafia gangs uh, that were supplying them with mules that were going to the ATMs and cashing out the money in 2015 and 2016. Dennis K. was the first arrested member of the Carbonac Hackers Organization, but he didn't remain the only one for long. Two hackers were sentenced to eight years in a Kazakhstan prison after being found guilty of hacking into the IT systems of various banks, spanning 2016 and 2017. This was just the beginning, with more arrests taking place in August 2018 in Germany and Ukraine, and all criminals being extradited to the US to face charges. The suspect arrested in Germany, believed to be the gang's leader, was sentenced to 10 years in April 2021. After the 2018 arrests, the Carbonac hack group splintered into smaller groups, continuing to target the financial sector, and some also dabbled in ransomware. However, the group stopped operating as a whole at its previous scale, at least for now. I hope you enjoyed this dive into the cyber crimes of the cyber gang Carbonac. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to hear more stories like these. What cyber gang would you like us to cover? Or what other cyber-related stories would you like to see? Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss other interesting stories.